Hey all, this is Chris Gerald with Everyday VBA. In this video, we're going to be looking at another NIME workflow. If you've not downloaded NIME, uh, it is a pretty stinking awesome um, open source uh, data workflow tool. Um, I'm using it a lot these days, uh, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. So in the last video, we looked at this, which is uh, read Excel sheet names, um, which essentially you can read the sheets and get them through. Uh, get Basically read all the sheets, put them all together, and then export it. So in this one, we're going to, again, go to examples. We're going to open this up. You may have to double click if it's the first time. Click on data access, and we're going to go down to multiple sheets in one Excel file. So I'm going to go pretty quickly through these top sections um, because really what we want to get to is this piece right here. So this is uh, life changing if you do a lot of data analysis. And so we're going to get there pretty quick. So we have our raw set of data. So we're going to go ahead and execute this so that just so that we can take a look. So we're going to right click again. We're going to look at this file table. So it looks like this is um, a list of data information um, based on education, etc., based on income. Um, and essentially the business ask or the what, what we're doing with this workflow is, hey, we want to break these people up into whether they're divorced, never married or separated. Um, and we are going to take that and we're going to put that in. So the way to do that is really simple. You just create a row filter. So if you think of this um, similar to using Excel in which you would filter down, copy, paste and put it on a new sheet. So we're going to test column uh, test the column to test. We're going to use marital status. Now, obviously, if you selected these other ones, it's going to give you different options, but we're going to look for divorced and we're going to include rows. Now, if we wanted everybody that was not divorced, we would use exclude. Um, and then that's going to export into this guy right here. Um, and we're going to go ahead and just run it. So we're going to execute it and it's going to create this file. Um, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a change here just so we can take a look at it. Uh, we're going to configure. We're going to actually uh, open file after execution just so that we can take a look and see what happens. And we're going to go and you'll notice that the green dot went away because it hasn't been run. I'm going to execute this and it's going to pull up Excel, which is a beautiful thing. Now, if you do, if you are running multiples like this, um, you'll notice that this is divorced. You'll notice the tabs name is divorced. Um, and everybody is happy. If you do, if you are running multiple tabs with this, um, somewhat important to uh, make sure that you don't have open on all of it because it'll actually uh, kill the workflow. But there's a couple options in here. You can um, we're using the sheet appender, which is kind of the best one to use. There's a there's a sheet writer, but it basically writes the entire workbook. Um, which where that would make sense is if you were if you actually had a weekly deliverable that you had to do and you had to timestamp it that would make sense but for the most part this is probably the one this is the one that I use the most so all right so these do all the same thing so essentially um, they've came in here and renamed these so that it makes sense but if we were to configure these we would come in here and see the same stuff and like I said you guys can open this up um, uh, at your leisure and put this all together um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute all of these um, just so that it opens and then I'm going to run this one again because you're, if you'll remember we're going to unset we're going to reset this one which will reset this guy and I'm going to run it again and it's going to open it back up and we will see the divorce sheet the never married sheet and the separated sheet all in a single workbook which is a thing of beauty um, you'll notice never married, separated, and divorce. Isn't that incredible? All right. So the next thing we're going to do here, which kind of leads us down, down to this piece, is this is slightly different. Because when we put in a, uh, a row filter, it's going to use this pattern, right? So this pattern is going to be passed over as what they call a flow variable. So you'll be passing this. So if we click configure, you'll notice that this is blanked out. And the reason it's blanked out is because we're actually giving the sheet name this category. And that category is passed over from the row, fil row filter, which is pretty stinking sweet. So if we come in here and we execute this, this is going to do exactly the same thing. But what it does is it leads us to this last piece, which is down here which essentially is a loop. And what this is going to do is a group loop allows you to group your data. We are going to group it by the relationship 
um, string. Now you'll notice it says S, which is string. So it's going to group that data. And for every relationship that it loops through, it's going to write a sh new sheet um, to this workbook, which essentially is the one that we're working on it, which is the adult loop XLS, um, which is different than the ones that we're using up here, which is the adult XLS. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run this. So what's so I'm going to run this one at a time. So this group loop start, uh, and it's going to give us the group input, which essentially is the entire work, uh, the entire um, work. It's not the entire work. It's the entire data set. And then what this loop is going to do is it gets through here. It's going to write each one of uh, the variables, which the variable in here. Let's take a look here. Um, so based on these group variables, the group identifier, the relationship, the current iteration, and the name, it's going to pass all that over, and it's going to create a single sheet, which is a thing of beauty. We are going to run it, um, and again, you can take a look at this, uh, download this uh, this free workflow from them. Um, it will kind of blow your mind a little bit. So when that's done, uh, while that's running, you'll notice it's kind of nice because it runs it, right? And it actually tells you where that's that's being placed. The beauty of this is you can give a really long data set, um, a really long data set, and it'll actually loop it and group it together. So what's cool about this is we had to create um, three different sections up here to identify what we're looking for. Well, since we just went through every part of the relationship on what they actually were, what it did is for every time, every time there was a husband, it created a row and created a sheet. Everything that there was not a family, not in family, other time there was an other relative, other time there was a known child, every time there was unmarried, and every time there was a wife, it created a different sheet. Now what's cool about this is we are going to come in here um, and what makes this awesome is we can configure this to what is above, which is marital status. We're going to drop that out. Um, now you can do multiple groupings, um, which can be powerful. It also can create a very large spreadsheet. Um, it said that it, hold on. Oh, it, I don't think it likes it because I'm So we've got to change this to marital status. Um, otherwise, it's going to cause an issue. Um, and essentially, that right here, we come back over here and configure this. And you'll notice that because, uh, because it's being passed over, uh, we're good to go there. So um, that's one of the little tricks on that, which is somewhat confusing, um, but it kind of makes sense after you kind of dig in a little bit. Um, but once we run this, we have that set up. Um, and that is one of the challenges on these is you've got to, it takes a little while to kind of figure out what exactly are these nodes doing. Um, but it can, you know, it's not all bad. So this is running. We're about 80% done. Um, and it's going to essentially write in over this. Now, one of the things that's going to happen is we're going to notice that it's going to have all the sheets that it currently had. Um, but it's also going to have the divorced, never married, or separated, or married uh, so just keep that in mind as it is reading, putting this, exporting all this data. And we should be pretty close. Uh, and you can tell, let's see, there's one, two, three, four. And it's on the fifth marital status. It looks like there's going to be. And now that this is all green, it is all good to go. So let me just pull that bad boy up. Of course, it pulls up on the wrong screen. So you'll notice that this actually does show up um, with the existing sheets because I didn't delete them. Um, I didn't start over, but it does start right here um, with divorced, married AF spouse, married civ spouse, married with absent spouse, never married, separated, widowed, 
um, etc. And so um, it, it is additive. Um, but if I do run this again, and I my data set changed, it would overwrite these files. So this would be new, this would be new, um, or at least have um, additional data, because uh, that's typically how this works. So hope this is helpful. I know that this happens a lot where you've got to break your data up and pass it the other way. Um, you can actually do some other stuff where uh, once you have it in separate sheets, you can group it all together, which is kind of the first video that I, we took a look at. Um, but I hope this is helpful, and I hope you enjoyed.